Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Funky Like Feathers and today we're going to talk about editing your manuscript. Make sure you're checking out the live write-ins during the month of April every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Funky Like Feathers Facebook page. When it comes to editing, there are a couple of things that just need to be considered, right? First and foremost is the fact that everyone needs to edit their work. Nobody's work is perfect, okay? And that is one thing definitely to start off with accepting. I had a live write-in last night on Facebook and I kind of touched on a lot of these topics but I kind of want to delve into it a little bit more today. So again, step one, you want to let your manuscript sit. Sit. Stay. I would really suggest that you allow your manuscript to sit for at least 30 days, if not longer. And the reason to do that is so that you can kind of start to forget every single little detail that you put into that manuscript. Because when we first write it, we're very emotionally invested, we're overthinking a lot of things, and you won't realize some of the things that are written there because you're just too close to the story. By separating yourself, you can come back and realize that you wrote the same word a couple of times in a row, that you you know maybe spelled something wrong. Even last night I saw that I spelled the word server instead of severe. So little things like that you'll actually be able to notice if you allow your manuscript to sit for a while. Otherwise, you may gloss right past that and not realize it and that would severely affect the story. Uh, so let it sit. Now another thing to consider is the fact that before you go handing this story off to anyone else to read, you need to go through and do some edits yourself. I have had some people be in a group and they wrote with zero punctuation, zero capitalization, and then we're expecting other people to be able to read it. My cat is messing with the camera. Onyx. <laughs> Some of those things like simple punctuation, the basics of grammar, you definitely need to take care of those before you have anyone else look at your work. It does a disservice to the person reading your story if you don't have basic punctuation and grammar already taken care of when they are looking at it. It becomes much more difficult to read so they can't really absorb and appreciate the story unless you've already taken care of some of those other items. Some of the other things you want to check for yourself is making sure that points of view don't change, making sure that the story flows, looking for any random misspellings that may be in relation to names or places. Like in my story, I made up a name for a cafe, so that also means that I need to make sure that it's spelled correctly for me in all of the instances, even though a spell check is going to tell me that it is definitely spelled incorrectly. Other things to check for, obviously things like adverbs, all of your L-Y words. A lot of times we like to, you know, give descriptions as much as possible. However, those L-Y words really kind of take away from the story after a while. There's just, there's too much. When you take away a lot of those and just succinctly say what you needed to say, that can really help. As well as going through and checking to make sure that you're showing what is happening in the story as opposed to telling. So don't just say that a character is frustrated, maybe show some of the mannerisms that they had during that frustrated state so that the reader gets the gist of what you're putting out there, but you don't just blatantly state that the character was frustrated. Now, some of the supplies that I use while I'm editing is obviously I always use a purple pen. It's just what I normally write with. I always have my purple pen ready to go, which allows my writing to kind of stand off of the page a bit. But if I need to go back and actually reword something or look into it farther, what I do is I actually highlight it with a blue marker so that it tells me that this is a different kind of edit. It's not just a general, you know, put the period here, take this out. It's actually something that I need to look into further. By kind of differentiating my types of edits, it allows me to better know what I'm looking at on the page. Something else that I utilize, and I've talked about this before, is an AP style book. This is a 2017 edition. Uh, the 2019 edition is out and ready to go, and it's only about $15, so I actually need to order one for myself. The style book is super helpful 
because it also kind of allows you to know whether or not you used a word appropriately. And if you're not quite sure as far as structure goes for different items like titles or places and things like that, the AP Style Book gives you that kind of guidance so that you know exactly how you need to write something in order to be grammatically correct. Now I also like using some other writing resources that I find from different places, but I kind of print them out and I will put them in a notebook so that I know what kind of information I need, whether it is a better defined emotion, whether it is a word to replace a general item that I listed. Those kinds of things can really kind of add some depth to your story. So by having those resources easily at hand, you can just pull it right out and flip through and find the page that you need. So that way you kind of build up your own reference material for your writing in general. Uh, of course, most of us have codexes. Uh, some people call them a series Bible for this, that particular story that you're working on. However, I really like having general writing resources so that I kind of know exactly what I need to work on for the overarching or overall goal of the story to make sure that everything flows properly and to make sure that all of my characters are kind of properly showcased. Now one of the most invaluable resources that you can possibly have when you're editing and going through a manuscript is writing buddies. Those people you can count on to give you honest feedback and critique about your work are absolutely invaluable. It's also important to kind of take notes on what it is that they think needs to be updated or corrected and at the same time weigh out those critiques. Is it something that you really need to take to heart or is it something that stylistically works for your your piece that's something always to kind of keep in mind just because somebody gives you feedback doesn't mean that that's the only way that you need to do it every single piece of feedback or critique that you get is yours to take so one of those things again that I like to do is I go ahead and write down every bit of critique that I get if it works for the story in order to make it better and I feel that it makes it better then I go ahead and make sure that I utilize that however if it's something that you know is particular to that person and I don't feel it's actually going to make my story better I don't actually have to use it so these are some of the basics when it comes to editing a manuscript I am going through all of this right now with Camp NaNoWriMo. I went ahead and made my goal to edit a portion of my book since I need to rewrite the entire ending. <laughs> so I've got a lot of stuff going on with that. Obviously, you know, everybody's pretty much stuck inside right now because of the coronavirus, but I think we're all pretty tired about talking about it. It's just obnoxious at this point, and we all just want to get back to our normal lives. I'm going to go work on editing this giant manuscript. If you want to know, this is the manuscript that I'm going through. Um, yeah, I'm rewriting the entire third act which is major. So it's good. It's a positive thing. Uh, I think it's going to make the story a whole lot better. It's also a very large project to take on, but it is Camp NaNoWriMo. So that means that it's it's time to work on something. Let me know what you guys are working on for Camp NaNoWriMo or just in general down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys and I hope to see you again on the live write-ins that I'll be having on Facebook. So if you go to Facebook, look up Funky Like Feathers. I will be there every Wednesday this month at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for live write-ins and a bunch of just random writing chat. I hope to see you guys there. I'll see you in the next video.